Good evening, Can Hammer fans. Welcome back to your Sorcerer 40K, 8th edition from the Great White North. This is a short video on how to make an army, how to write a list. Um, I'm uh, playing Logan uh, in a couple of days, and I'm just uh, going through the process of making a new Lion's Blade Strike Force in 8th edition. And um, I've already made the list, so I thought, well, it would be a good video to sort of take people both new to the game and transitioning from 7th edition into how you write your list these days. Disclaimer, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass right now. First of all, because there's not an app that does all the math for you, so it's back to pen and paper. Uh, second of all, because people are just not used to paying for their unit and then paying for all the mo uh, weapons, including the ones that it comes with. And sometimes that's zero and sometimes it costs something. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. And of course, there's new detachments and force organization charts. So it, it's a little bit of a process and I've done a lot of list writing over the last five days. So I thought I'd try and help people to skip a bit of the learning curve and get straight on the wagon. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing to note is, first of all, this is about writing a matched playlist, not narrative and not using power levels. That is a very easy way to write a list. You just decide with your opponent how many power levels you're going to play and you just put in units that you want up to that power level. That's very easy. Um, upgrades and everything doesn't matter. The power level is listed on the data sheet next to the force org slot right there. And so all you have to do is add those power levels up and you got your army. So I'm going, we're going to be doing using points, uh, matched play as if we were going to a tournament. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to say is I don't have a calculator on me. So the points may be roughly not over or under 2000. So don't write in the comments below that I was one point over or whatever. I'm not being accurate today. This is a more of a video showing you the principles of doing it. Um, and then if anybody is, is interested in my actual accurate list with points and everything, uh, just let me know. I can uh, post it up on the Facebook or something. So here is uh, the current list that I'm going to be playing on Friday. So first of all, you have to look at the rules for making a list. So here is the page from the rule book about choosing your army. So first of all, um, for what is going to be most tournaments uh, playing sort of GW approved or ITC format, it's going to be 2000 points and it's going to be three detachments. So you see there at the bottom, their chart for organized play recommended guidelines uh, for two and a half hour rounds, 2000 points, um, three detachment limit. So that's number one. Number two, uh, your whole army must be, uh, must share, uh, army faction. Okay. They have to share at least one faction keyword in common. Okay. So that could be the main one such as Imperium, or it could be smaller ones such as Dark Angels or Blood Angels, uh, or it could be Adeptus Astartes or Chaos or Heretics. Like it has to share one faction keyword in common and that goes for each of your detachments as well. Okay. So... Imperium right now is probably the biggest soup. You can draw from two whole indexes which have the faction keyword Imperium. You can throw anything you want into any detachment as, um, and all you have to worry about is the force orc slots and your points. That's the easiest, um, but that's just an example. Everything has to be the same uh, faction keyword and that's where the faction keywords really come into play, okay? Second of all, obviously you have to stay under the points limit, no going over. Uh, and uh, reinforcements points. So nothing is free in match play. Um, if you summon something, you have to have those points already set aside in your reinforcement points in order to summon it. Otherwise, you can't summon it, okay? Any th ability or thing or uh, rule that adds models to your army, you have to have paid for uh, ahead of time. And according to Reason Frankie, that includes bringing models back using a Narthesium on your apothecary. Um, so it counts for everything. Right, Reggie? Reggie approves. Reggie approved. That'll be the new hashtag for this uh, army list. It is Reggie approved. We already know Reggie likes to eat gene stealers, and now he likes to eat my pen. Isn't that right, Reggie? Okay, go away, Reggie. Okay. So those, uh, that's about reinforcement points. Match play, you have to pay for everything. Um, finally, uh, just things to keep in mind when you're making your 
roster is that uh, psychic powers can only be cast once other than smite so no point bringing 10 psychers you'll only be able to cast three powers anyway because every faction only has three powers um and uh, number two is um command points so if you stick to the detachments which i'll show you in a second you get command points um just for having a battle forged army so all your whole army shares a faction keyword you get three command points and then if you take special detachments you get extra ones and those can be used for all sorts of things including um uh, re-rolls and things like that so uh you know why don't we just talk about those quickly so here are the um uh, only three stratagems that you can use right now uh, for one command point uh, you can re-roll any one dice per phase so that's super good for two command points you can interrupt the order of combat so that your unit fights next that's pretty good too and for finally for two command points you can automatically pass a morale test so very useful especially at the end of the game or if you really need your unit to stick around so that is something else to keep in mind when you're building your army how many command points you want to aim for and you'd be surprised you might end up taking extra hqs or an extra certain thing of a certain slot just so it fits into another detachment for to get you an extra command point so we don't know how powerful that is right now but it seems like it's powerful the uh final thing to keep in mind is that most of the missions involve uh, a lot of them hold uh, involve holding objectives and th the way that you hold objectives is by having more models number of models within certain distance of the objective than your opponent so this automatically biases successful armies towards having more models rather than being low model count if you want to play successfully to the mission so keep that in mind um, a few th uh, now that I've read through all the indexes I noticed a few trends in army construction that I suspect will be powerful. One is blobs, blobs or large groups of models. Just because you can uh, hold stuff down with blobs, blobs can do a lot of damage through uh, force multiplication. Blobs uh, can hold objectives better because there's more models and blobs can block off larger parts of the board, including access to objectives. So blobs are gonna be big, I think, in this edition. Number two is going to be big things. So big monsters, uh, big heroes, and vehicles. I suspect most armies are going to be fielding uh, a combination of blobs and then vehicles just because they're so hard, so much harder to kill now. And, uh, you, ha and you have to dedicate specific kind of multi-damage firepower in order to kill them. Similarly, blobs, you need to have stuff in your army that can be able to deal with large numbers of models. So not not one weapon doing d6 damage but one weapon shooting six times and doing one damage so um i think uh and then the final thing that's going to influence people is actually heroes so uh, or characters as we call them sorry in 40k um, because they can hide uh and they are the buffers that make a lot of armies work most armies depend on synergies in terms of stacking buffs uh, and overlapping buffs i think these are the three things you really got to plan for in your army construction and every army has the capability of doing these so one you need to be able to deal with large numbers of chaff number two you need to be able to kill vehicles or monsters um, and sometimes even large things like knights and number three you need some way of taking characters out um, without having necessarily to go through 60 conscripts so snipers uh, assassin something like that i think these three things will be key i don't know that for sure obviously and the, the game hasn't even been released yet so there's no meta to speak of but um, that's what the vibe i get from reading the books so let's get started so we're going to build our lines blade strike force so by definition it's going to be dark angels chapter which means everything i take uh, can be Imperium or Dark Angels, so I actually can take any models. It says specifically here that in a Dark Angels Force I can take any of these uh, normal Space Marine models, which which I already know that's all the Space Marine stuff basically. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so so what I would tend to do at this stage where we're not net listing yet and we don't know what the meta is, is just take what you want to take take what you have if you already own these models uh, so my list is completely based on what i own i don't want to buy any new models right now because i don't know what's going to be good or bad i'm just taking building a list out of what i have which is a lot 
or if you're starting from scratch, just build it from what you like the look of. Everything has its place in the new edition, it seems. There are not a lot of um, bad models. So just um, keep in mind this formula that you're going to have to deal with this, and thus I think that a successful army should have a combination of these things as well to present multiple threats to your opponent. You can always overload one of these and you'll be successful against some of your opponents and very unsuccessful against some of your opponents. So my theme of my army is that I want to try and replicate a Lion's Blade Strike Force, which in 7th edition was lots of Marines, lots of vehicles, and uh, uh, specific aspects of Marines to deal with specific um, threats. And uh, so uh, what I need is uh, a lot of Marines. So I just start putting down the things that I need. So what do I need? I need a lot of Marines. So I need tactical squads. Okay, so I need tactical squads, and I'm thinking I want to do, uh, let's say six. So I need six tactical squads, five men each, okay? So I need tactical squad one, tactical squad two, tactical squad three, tactical squad four, tactical squad five, Tactical Squad 6. I'll start with 6 right now because I don't think I'm going to be able to get more than 6 given that I have to pay for all my transports now. Boo-hoo. Um, so we have to keep that in mind. Now keep in mind that uh, I'm sticking to 5-man Tactical Squads because I, I rather like MSU and it, it kind of decreases... It kind of half decreases, but half increases the effect of morale. Um, but, you know, Marines get, they shall know no fear, and they get to re-roll their morale test. So I'm not too concerned about morale. Um, so I stick to small units so I can have more options and flexibility. So in my tactical squads, I need loadouts. So they in a five-man squad, I can have one heavy weapon or one specialist weapon. And keeping in mind that I want to do this, you know... Uh, let's just start to 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 fill things in. So I'm going to stick with grav cannons. Uh, I played a lot of grav in seventh, and grav is still good, and they're very flexible because, by definition, the people who have high armor it does more damage to, and with the minus three, and people who have low armor it's good for killing chaff because that's four hits. So it kind of goes both ways. It's the most expensive heavy weapon, so it's more than a missile launcher, more than a last cannon. The missile launcher is another flexible thing, but I just feel it's better than a missile launcher. Plus, I don't have missile launchers. I don't want to buy missile launchers. I have eight grav cannons. So what I want to bring is three grav cannons. Okay, so... Now it's where our pieces of paper come in. Okay, so we know from our Space Marine reference list that uh, tactical squads are 13 points per model, and I'm doing five, so that's uh, 65 points for just the models here. And then for the grav cannon, it's, uh, I, know, I know it's 28, but I'll just show you for the sake of here. Grav cannon, grav amp. 28 points. Okay, so it's pretty expensive. As I said, it's probably the most expensive uh, heavy weapon that Marines can take. Okay, so that is uh, 80, 93 points for my tactical squads. Okay, which is actually cheaper than it used to be. So it used to be 105 for uh, a tactical squad with the grav cannon. So, so that's actually cheaper than it was. So then what so that kind of is mostly going to be chaff killing but it has flexibility to put damage onto vehicles and knights and things like that so what i want also is um the ability to pop uh, vehicles and knights so the two options here really for focused power are melta and uh las cannons and the difference is Melta is assault weapon, so I can advance and still shoot it, but it's only 12 inch range, and in fact the Melta effect is only 6 inch range. And then heavy, uh, last cannons though, have a 48 inch range, so they can really reach out and touch somebody, but they're heavy, so they're going to be shooting minus 1. But on an assault, if you advance and shoot to get further in range, that's also a minus 1. So those two kind of cancel each other out. So really it's about do you want short range or do you want long range. So what I decided to do is a mixture of both. So I, I gave Melta guns 
to these three squads and they can drive up and pop out and melt the things. Okay, so again we have 65 points for the Marines. Melt the guns are 17 points. So these squads are 75, 83 points. 10 points cheaper than the Grav Cannons. Okay, so I think the combination of six squads going up in transports and then getting out and popping off infantry and or vehicles is, is pretty good. Now keep in mind there's also four bolters in each of these squads that can kill chaff. So bolters are still very good for that, especially if you're rapid firing. That's, uh, you know, that's eight shots each. So, so that's good. Um, and then what I want to do is splash in some last cannons too for, for real, um, to help because uh, I feel like it's going to be really hard to kill things like knights unless you really dedicate a portion of your army to doing serious multi-damage. Because, um, you know, 24 wounds is a lot to go through. Um, so what I decided was then I will take one squad of Devastators. And they're rocking three to four LAS cannons. I ended up deciding to take the max out at four four last cannons and what these guys are going to do is sit in the backfield somewhere use their range in cover and plink away wounds okay so that's going to be again 65 for these guys and last cannons are 25 each so that's another 100 points on last cannons um, so these guys are actually rocking in at 165 points okay now what i don't want these guys is to ever have to move and i need them to be able to reroll. So I keep that in mind, okay, I, um, when we talk about HQs. Because now when you're looking to buff these guys, you're talking about looking at HQs and then you, you can look at different things. So, so that's my seventh unit of, of Marines there. And then um, what I want now is some way of shooting at characters. So remember our rubric here, we need blobs. Um, uh, monsters and vehicles and heroes. So there's a few options really there's just scouts with sniper rifles um, And so initially I had splashed in one or two squads of scouts with sniper rifles which come out to 90 points Two plus in cover they get to deploy anywhere within nine inches of the deployment zone pretty good um, But in fact what I really wanted to try And I've just put one in is the Vindicare assassin So the Vindicare assassin looks to be pretty good at killing heroes so you won't be able to read that very well but so he's 90 points he's the same number of points as a scout squad okay he gets um uh, a four plus in cover okay which basically and he has a four plus inbound so um but more importantly so he he shoots on a two plus and his rifle is 72 inches so it can hit anything on the table Strength five, um, but what really happens is invuln saves can't be taken against this, and it has minus three rends, so that's pretty good. That's almost an auto wounding people, and does D three damage, and it wounds automatically. Infantry is wounded on two plus regardless of the strength, so it's designed to kill characters that are also infantry, which is a lot of them. Um, and then, uh, it's specifically, he's a sniper, he can target characters even if it's not the closest. And if you roll a 6 on your wound roll, it does d6 damage instead of d3. And most characters are 5 or 6 wounds, so you could totally one-shot a character. Um, yep, and then uh, it ignores cover. And then uh, it also gives uh, your opponents minus 1 to hit this guy because he's got the stealth suit, or minus two if he's in cover, which is almost certainly going to be standing on top of a tall building or something. So we're talking a minus two to hit the assassin. He's going to be very hard to kill, and he's got five wounds. So um, so I think he's going to be awesome, but we'll see. He, as any assassin, can deploy anywhere on the field outside of nine inches of the model. Uh, so he can go wherever I want him to go once I see where all the characters are set up. So I think he's going to go. So I splashed in a Vindicare Assassin for 90 points as my hero hunting character. Okay. Um, 
And then now I need transports for all these things. So what do I want my transports to do other than transporting people? Um, so I don't feel there's any point bringing rhinos. Uh, rhino is 70 points, okay? And then you add in a storm bolter, which is two points. So um, a rhino is 72 points and a razorback is 65. And if you bring the twin heavy bolter 17, so that ends up being 82. So it's only 10 points more to bring a razor back with a twin heavy bolter, which is way better in terms of killing things. And if I'm just stuck with five man squads and there's no such thing as firing hatches or anything like that, there's literally no reason for me to bring rhinos, okay? Obviously, if you're carting around 10 man squads, you're gonna have to bring rhinos. So I'm gonna go with razor backs. They all get razor backs. except the Devastators, they're just gonna sit in the back. And Razorbacks are 65 points each. Okay, now what do I want on them? Um, all the weapons are fairly similarly priced. Here's the ranged weapon loadouts for uh, Razorbacks, all the twin ones. So assault cannon, auto cannon, bolt gun, not bulk gun, uh, heavy bolter, not heavy flamers, heavy pilot, uh, last cannons. So I'm really looking for, at heavy bolter to keep it cheap, 17 points, or uh, or a twin last cannon at 50 points is just too much, and I already got four last cannons and three melters. I don't need the last cannons. I need chaff, chaff killing. Uh, so either it's going to be heavy bolters or the assault cannons for twice as much, 35 points. And so then, at first I went heavy bolters. And then I could bring an extra razor back. But for the price of an extra razor back, I could bring assault cannons. And twin assault cannons. If you bear with me for a second here. Twin assault cannons, 24 inch. Heavy 12. String six minus one, one. That's basically an Avenger Gatling cannon from a knight. It is, literally that's the same stats. So, and they're all heavy anyway, so that doesn't matter. So I'm totally bringing heavy, uh, an Avenger Gatling cannon sitting on the top of my Razorbacks. So when you do the math, when it's all, ideally I'd like six of them, but it's probably gonna be too expensive because they're 35 each. So let's just splash in three for now. Okay, so twin assault cannon, 35. Twin assault cannon, 35. Twin Assault Cannon 35. So that takes these to a flat 100 for the Assault Cannon Razorbacks. And then these ones are gonna be Heavy Bolters, Twin Heavy Bolter, which are 17 points each. So literally the transport is the same cost as the units, 83 points. Okay, so where are we up to now? We're up to about 600 you know, 1,200, we're up to like 1,300 approximately. Okay, just very, I don't wanna do the math, it's very rough. So now what do we need is we need some HQs. How many HQs do we need? Well, it's difficult to know, uh, and this is where you can start looking at the detachments. So let's look at the detachments here. So these are the various detachments you can use, starting from the basic one, the patrol detachment, which gives you no bonus command points, and it's just an HQ and one to three troops. Okay, that's like your basic allied detachment. Then you have the battalion detachment, which is probably gonna be the most common one that people run at 2,000 points, two or three HQs, uh, three to six troops, and all the other ones optional, you get um, three command points for that, so that's decent. The Brigade is basically a full Monty. Three, uh, lots of HQs, six to 12 troops, and three to six of all the other ones, other than flyers. And you get nine uh, command points for that. But to fill that, even at minimum price, for Marines anyway, is, all, is basically impossible. So no Brigade. So your good starting point, really, for a balanced army is to start with a Battalion, and then add in one of these depending on what slots you have the most of. So the Vanguard is one HQ, one to two HQ and three to six elites. The Spearhead is one to two HQs and three to six heavy support. And the Outrider is one to two HQs and 
um, three to six fast attack and they all give you one extra command point so this is just a way of splashing in extra slots depending on what your army is so for my raven wing i'm using outriders because i have all bikes for um you know space wolves i'm using this one because they're all elite slots you know etc and then these are the special ones if you really need to run a lot of hqs you run the supreme command detachment for an extra command point if you are playing all knights then you play this one three to five lords of war that's really the only uh, uh applicability for that one you get three command points if you need to splash in more than one or two flyers you you run that one and if you just want to take one knight or one lord of war you splash in that one that gives you no bonuses but allows you to do that and then this is the only formation that allows you to take fortification is this fortification network and that gives you no bonuses and then there's these auxiliary support detachments basically it allows you to take one unit or model from any slot and put it in your army however uh, you lose a command point for doing that. So it's like a penalty. Okay, so basically what you're basically going to do most of the time is you start with a battalion Maybe a patrol and then you add on the vanguard the spearhead or the outrider Depending on the focus of your army and then maybe a lord of war or fortification or one of those things so looking at my army HQs aside I have one two three four five six uh, six troop choices and one heavy support and one elite so really uh, if I choose my battalion so I already have my six troop choices but I only need three but I need two to three HQs in that to get that and that's going to give me a decent and then I can have um, uh, and I can have any number, you know, I can have my heavy support 0 to 3 in there. I can have my elites and fast attack. So I'm really looking at a battalion detachment right now um, and before I add onto those. And you know also that every unit can take a dedicated transport and that doesn't take up any slots. Okay, so right now I'm working towards a battalion detachment. But if I have four HQs and I split my troops into three and three, I could actually have two battalion detachments and thus get six extra command points. And, and, and there's no difference functionally between that other than I get more command points. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wanna aim for four HQs with uh, three troops in each. So I get two battalion detachments and I get six command points plus the three for being battleforged. So I get nine command points from doing that, which is great. So I need four HQs. So what do I want my HQs to do? Well, this is Alliance Blade Strike Force fluff for lots of reasons. I'm gonna take Azrael, okay? Azrael's a beast as well. He's very good in combat. He's got a strong weapon. He's got this crazy mastercrafted bolt gun, plasma gun combo. Uh, and more importantly, his helmet that that dude carries gives everyone within six inches a four plus invuln save, which is crazy good. And because he's a chapter master and all the chapter masters in the book so far do this, you allow all your uh, factions, so Dark Angels, to re-roll hit rolls within six inches. So uh, Marnius Calgar does that. All the various dudes who lead their factions do that. And also, he gives me an extra command point if he's my warlord just for fun. So that would bring me up to 10 command points. So I'm taking Azrael as my HQ number one. And the plan will be that he's going to sit in the middle and buff everybody around him with invuln and rerolls to hit. So Azrael's number one. He is not that cheap. Let's try and find him here. Uh, he's in the Dark Angels points. Okay, so Azrael is uh, 180 points, including his war gear. There we go. Three points cheaper than uh, Sam Ale. So he's 180 points, which is a decent chunk of change. Um, then what I need is some psychics. So psychics is just good. And unless you're playing against Zeech, your psychic will always be able to do something. At the minimum, be able to do smite, which is awesome. Three mortal wounds shouldn't be sniffed at. Um, and at the at the most, you can cast some, some of the enteromancy powers, which are pretty good. 
I particularly like a version that gives people minus one to hit. Um, and uh, and there's one that lets you uh, make them attack last. And then one that has uh, makes them take an immediate morale test. So, you know, they're not bad powers. So I want to run one or two librarians in order to throw out mortal wounds, really. So um, I decided to run uh, two librarians. And I'm running them on bikes because those are the models I have and it's Dark Angels. So a Libby on bike actually is in the Space Marine package. And I know that with the four sword that my guys are modeled with, they're like 117 or something like that. The four sword is 14 and the twin bolt gun on the bike is actually two points. That was 12 and two points. So it's actually 14 for a war gear. So they end up being like 128 or something. And I'm taking two of them, okay? So now I need one more character. So now what I decided to do was, as I said before, my devs are sitting at the back and they're not moving and I don't want them to miss. So the easiest, cheapest way for Space Marines to take something that allows people to reroll hits or at least reroll hit rolls of one is a basic captain. And a basic captain comes in at just 73 points with a master crafted bulk on which is like two points, something like that. And then so for 75 points, He's just gonna sit there and get my last cannons to reroll hit rolls of one, which means they only miss on twos. So that's my loadout in terms of HQ. So I got four HQs. So that's 200, you know, 400, like 500. So I'm at 1800 approximately now for my army. So I have some space to play with. I have 200 points to play with. I can have any slot that I like. Um, so what should I take? Well, this is where my decisions have gone from Dreadnought, uh, more Vindicare Assassins just for fun, um, more Assault Cannons, more Grav, um, or why don't I throw in some fun things? So actually what I decided to throw in was a Dark Shroud, a Ravenwing Dark Shroud. And what this does, it gives a six inch bubble where the enemy shooting at those things has minus one to hit. So that seems like a pretty good buff to me. And it's about totally in. The Dark Shroud is 183 points and that's with an Assault Cannon. Uh, so, you know, since I haven't been doing accurate math on my real list, that takes me up to about 2000. Um, the other option was to run a Dark Talon. Um, and I might still do that. The Dark Talon is, is, is awesome, I think. It's a flyer, so uh, it's harder to hit. You can't lock it down in combat. And the uh, Rift Cannon is sick and does mortal wounds. And the Stasis Bomb also does mortal wounds. So it's one, it's one of the few sources other than Smite. Actually, the only source that Dark Angels have other than Smite of doing mortal wounds. So I might still sub that in at the last minute. Um, but a six inch minus one to hit bubble is pretty good. Um, so, uh, but then so is a flyer that does mortal wounds. So, um, I might end up doing that. You know, the more I talk to you guys about it, I think I'm going to try that first and then I'll bring my dark shroud and see how that goes. So let's sub in the dark talon. Um, just for interest, I'm going to show you the dark talon. So, so, you know, you dark angels guys who are watching this video, don't pass the Dark Talon over. The Nephilim still sucks, but the Dark Talon, so. First of all, it's decently difficult to kill. It's got toughness six and 10 wounds and a three plus save. Um, it uh, starts off moving 2040, which is pretty good, uh, and has BS of three, but it has strafing run, so it gets add ones to the hit rolls um, when shooting things that are not flyers, so that's pretty good. So really hitting on twos for most things that you wanna hit. And then, um, it has Hurricane Bolters, which is Rapid Fire 6, so within 12 inches it's going to be shooting 12 shots, and it's got two of them, so that's a chaff killer for sure. And then it's got the Rift Cannon, so 18 inch range, D Heavy, D3, um, and then Strength 10, minus 3, for, for 3 damage. And then if you do damage, which you probably will if you hit, then you actually roll another dice, and on this number which gets worse as you get damaged, target unit suffers a further D3 mortal wounds. That's awesome. So that is really good. So um, that is something that can kill characters one shot or uh, take a lot of wounds off vehicles. 
It can jink, like all Ravenwing stuff, so it gets a 5 plus if it, if it advances. It gets a 5 plus invuln. Uh, and then there's the Stasis Bomb. One use only, Chaff Killer. You f any unit that you fly over, you roll a d6 for every model in that unit, up to 10 dice. And on a 4 plus, the unit suffers Mortal Wound. Which is awesome. So if you roll 10 dice, say you run over a bunch of Hormagons, and you roll on average, you know, 5. That's uh, 5 Mortal Wounds straight up just for just for moving. So that's pretty good. Um, not as good just for running over one thing. And then because it's a flyer, it can hover, and it has minus 1 to hit when it's flying, and it has the supersonic rule, it has all these things, crash and burn, all this sort of things. But that is that is a great flyer, in my opinion. And this thing is uh, 180 points, and the dark shroud is uh, is 128. So uh, 180 points. Then you got to pay points for the uh, for the weapons. Uh, but for dark angels, most of the weapons are zero. So uh, the rift cannon is zero points to upgrade, and the hurricane bolters are in the marine codex, and hurricane bolters are. Um, Hurricane Boulders are only four points, and he's got two of them, so eight. So it's 188 points uh, for the Dark Talon, which is a straight sub in. So I think I might do that. And that's basically my my army. 2,000 points. It's about 100 uh, power level, and uh, I think it provides the opponent a lot of things they have to kill, a lot of vehicles they have to kill, so they have to do the same thing of popping transports to get to the juicy stuff inside, and it's so much harder to kill transports now as well the transport can shoot assault cannons and heavy bolters and it can charge and hold up your units to prevent them from shooting so transports i think this is a real good thing for uh, marine armies now is to use their rhinos and razorbacks effectively um, it has enough firepower to kill chaff definitely with the assault cannons on the uh, razorbacks all the heavy bolters all the marine bolters as well as the um, hurricane bolters on the flyer and um, and the stasis bomb. Uh, it has a source of mortal wounds in terms of uh, smite and in terms of the uh, rift cannon. And it's got uh, tank and night killers in terms of grav cannons and melticons and four las cannons. And it can snipe characters with the vindicare. Um, Asriel buffs by providing rerolls and 4 plus invuln saves. Um, so I think it's a fairly balanced list and I'm um, excited to see what it does. So uh, thanks for watching this video. That's basically how you make an army in the new 40k. And uh, if you like, uh, please subscribe. Uh, follow us on Facebook as well at Facebook forward slash dot canhammer. Support us on Instagram at uh, on Instagram at canhammer underscore yt. And if you really like to help us produce more content, um, then please uh, think about supporting us at patreon.com forward slash canhammer. Good night.